Welcome, Taurus, to this, your September 2024 reading and forecast. Hi, I'm Nigel St. James Clairvoyant. Well, this month we have a, a beautiful deck. The artwork on it is amongst the best of anything that's out there still. It's the Mariel deck. And what I like about it is that it has a lot to say and it often has different things to say at different times and of course in accordance with how the cards might be placed with respect to one another. I know that you will enjoy it and I am looking forward to doing your reading for you. Now you know that I provide clairvoyant readings for people from all over the world over FaceTime and Skype and if you might be interested in exploring what's involved in that just check out the information that's in the description below. Now I charge for clairvoyant readings. I have to, you know, I'm going to pay for the phone and all that sort of stuff. But there's another spiritual gift that I was provided with at birth, and that is the gift of healing. Now, healing is provided on the basis that I get nothing in return for it. That is to say, I offer it for free. I have to provide it to anyone who asks. With nothing in return, no obligation attached, you won't be sold or recommended anything, you won't be talked into having a reading with me, for example or with anybody else, nothing will be sold to you. It is what it is, the healing comes through me and not from me as you would understand. It's part of my soul contract to provide it and to provide it for free. So if that speaks to you, then just have a look at the information that's contained in the description as well. Now there are no video advertisements breaking their way into this content and so you get to enjoy the the whole reading uninterrupted by advertisements and each of these cards has a lot to say to us so we shall get straight into it and take five because that will take our time. Show me the magic. The five of discs. That's this. The three of discs. Quite material for you. The sun right in the middle of your spread. Here is justice. And finally, what do we have? Something from in here somewhere, shall we? Here we go. And it is, oh, what a great looking card. The three of wands. Well, why did I bring the camera around? You and I can have a good close look at the artwork that's on these cards together while the cosmic energy swirls and speaks to us both. And I'll do the reading for you. Well, it doesn't get better than this. You've got the sun right in the middle of the card there. Justice, tremendous uh, power and energy with you. A couple of worries, but they are overcome by all this other energy. And I think it might mean also, well, I'll get to it in a moment, but I'm thinking of maybe looking just, let's look at this card here, the sun, the highest energy card that you can have in the Tarot system here. So this is speaking to me for you of a highly creative energy now and awareness. There's also fulfilled love relationships around. There's a wisdom here. If I was to sum this energy up in one word, it would be yes. You go to hear of marriage, I think, and this is a time of good fortune, good luck for you. You're going to find success in things that you pursue, and there's optimism and happiness coming around for you as well. Well, the sun, of course, is the source of life, and it represents success and abundance. And this is going to follow you at this time in your life. And this energy here is going to set you up. It's going to get you through any tough times. Now, I think you have been having something of a trying time, haven't you? Well, this is now going to shine a flashlight, a flood light onto the path ahead of you after what has been a trying time. So you know which direction to go and how you find success. And that's almost, that's also indicated by these things here, I think. So this is the time to embrace your goals and give it everything that you've got. But just be comforted though, that if you have had some tough times, 
Things now are, they're going to get better. Now there's something else that I should mention in relation to this that I'm thinking is that because this has shown up and it's in the center here, now this may not necessarily be to you, but it is going to be to some people here, that it's an indication that there are issues of co-relationships and teamwork. They're jumping up at me in the, for some reason. Also perhaps going into some venture or partnership, a joint activity with someone, which might be in business, it could be social, it could be, it could be sport. You might find that you get involved in creative groups or projects with other people. There is here, I think, a time of sort of restructuring and restructuring any long standing relationships. And those relationships don't just have to be romantic. They could be supplier, customer, business, or what have you. But I do think here also that there is the chance here where lovers might end up in the friend zone. So the fulfillment of your wishes is possible here and now. Relax and just give yourself up. Give yourself up to this, to this dance, to this rave, because the right partners will find each other. Now, ask yourself what task or project is on the agenda for you now, and visualize the light and warmth of the sun in your chest and heart. And for the next few days, remind yourself several times daily that the sun is shining in and through you. But do say this to yourself. I work well in teamwork situations. I enjoy making contributions to group efforts because I am a cooperative person. But more importantly, I am in harmony with the divine light which fills and guides me. Now, I want to see what's on this top thing. You drew this first. And this guy looks like a tree, doesn't he? Looks like a tree here. What is this? It's just speaking to me coming up. Oh, worries. What are you worrying about? Discs. Uh, you're worrying about material things. What about that car? What about that dress? What about those shoes? What about that game? Do you have enough? Really, it's also asking you, I think, to look inside you. I'm very much getting a tree around here. Look, the, the, the astrology of this is Mercury ruling the first decan of your sign, so I don't see it as being as bad as it could otherwise be for other people, for example. So you'll be able to get through this because the speed and uh, evasiveness, I suppose, of Mercury, they get weighed, it gets weighed down in the in your fixed sign of Earth. Now, there is the chance that for some reason that you might find that your energy is blocked or that your thoughts keep revolving around finding a solution, a way out, a breakthrough. And this situation, I think, might touch the depths of your subconscious and go right through you. You may even think that's a black hole, that there's no way out and that it's hopeless. Well, that's wrong. I actually suspect that this is something which has been going on for some time with you and it hasn't been dealt with. You might be asking yourself, am I getting myself into a situation that I might not be able to get out of? Will events overwhelm me? Worries here. Worry, of course, is about the past and the future. And good luck doing anything about either of those. It's impossible. You actually should ask yourself if you knew that for sure you were going to die at two o'clock in the afternoon next Tuesday, what would you be worrying about? You wouldn't be worrying about the things that are going through your mind, are there? But you can worry about material things like unexpected expenses. Uh, worry doesn't do anything. And, and, and it can cause you to put off to, to not to do anything, which can make things go worse in your life. 
I've got to tell you that. The next card after this five of dicks, discs. These speak of great success here for you, so we'll get to those in a second. But what am I doing with this tree? I'm getting this very abstract, otherworldly information around this energy, which is difficult to put into language. Maybe I can tell you a story. Can I do that? You see, and this is about trees, because this is reminding me of a tree. You see, for me, trees have always been the most penetrating teachers, and I revere them when they live in tribes and families, in forests and groves, and even more, I revere them when they stand alone. They are like lonely persons, not like hermits who have stolen away out of some weakness, but like great solitary men, like Julius Caesar or Napoleon Bonaparte. Now, of course, in trees, it's in their highest branches that the world rustles and their roots rest in infinity. But they don't lose themselves there. They struggle with all the force of their lives for one thing only, to fulfill themselves according to their own laws, to build up their own form, to be a tree. They want to represent themselves. Now, I guess nothing is kind of holier than a beautiful, strong tree. When a tree is cut down, you know, you can read its whole history in that luminous, inscribed disc that you see in its trunk, in the rings of its years, its scars, all the struggle, all the suffering, all the sickness, all the happiness and the prosperity. Well, they all stand written there, the narrow years, as well as the luxurious years, the attacks withstood and the storms endured. And the strongest trees grow at the top of mountains where they are most susceptible to the harshest of the elements. Now, a tree says, a kernel is hidden in me, a spark, a thought, I am life from eternal life. The attempt and the risk that the eternal mother took with me is unique. Unique the form and the veins of my skin. Unique the smallest play of leaves in my branches and the smallest scar on my bark. I was made to form and reveal the eternal in my smallest special, special details. Now, I guess when we worry about things, and you don't have anything to worry about here, but you feel that you are stricken and can't bear your lives any longer, then a tree has something to say to you. Be still, be still, look at me. Life is not easy, life is not difficult. Those are childish thoughts. Let God speak within you and your thoughts will grow silent. You are anxious because your path leads away from mother and home. But every step and every day, they lead you back again to the mother. The home is neither here nor there. Home is within you, or home is nowhere at all. All right then, tree man, thank you for that. Let's have a look at this justice card on its major arcana. 
So this, of course, is the goddess Mart from the ancient Egyptian religion. When, so, when people died, their soul came before Mart, who weighed their heart, because it was thought that the person was actually the heart, weighed their heart against a feather in a scale. And if they stayed in balance, then the person went on to eternity with the god Osiris. If the heart fell lower than the feather on the balance, then the soul was consigned to another god who was three parts to it, lion, crocodile, and hippopotamus, those most dangerous of animals along the Nile River in ancient Egypt where the soul was devoured and just extinguished. There's no hell, you just ceased to exist. That's a trivia I know. Now, there's a lot of Libra around there. She is really the daughter of the Lords of Truth, the ruler of the balance. This is Venus coming in here, and soul, Saturn is exalted. Now, this Libra energy is emphasizing that the energy here is about you getting balance and equilibrium. There's a karmic release coming about here as well. Justice, balance, adjustment. Maybe the suspension of you doing something, that is holding off on doing something, not making the decision on it, not taking the action on it, until you've looked at everything, until you've stood back and objectively looked at everything before making your your move. It's also here the balancing of opposites here. This speaks to me also that you'll be very good at thinking, have great ideas, wisdom is around here. And the powers of your thought are going to be directed towards and put in contact with the earth. And so you will actually be able to make things tangible. Now, in some respects, this is a call to you to avoid all extremes in your daily life. Now, this may refer to emotional disturbances in relationships or at work or in some creative activity or in dealing with money. Now, I think there's a total centeredness and inner balance necessary for you now. If, if these new ideas that are just bubbling underneath you are to bear fruit, because you know that from a position of balance, everything develops in a balanced way, in its place, and given the appropriate value. You might be finding that you take stock of your life and see what is useful or who is still useful and what or who should be let go. Sometimes you just outgrow things, you know. We do outgrow people also but you'll have a clear vision into the possibilities and choices that are ahead to you. And you'll be applying the insights that you've gained so far from your experience of life to make things happen. I think you'll be discovering and following your true path and what gives it the, the most meaning. Now, as I say, I do think that there is some karma being burnt off, if you like, to your benefit here. Do you know, people can get into a heavy-duty sin and guilt trip, feeling that if things are going wrong, then that means that they did something bad and that they are being punished. Well, that's not what karma is at all. The idea of karma is that you continually get the teachings that you need to open your heart. In fact, that is really what Saturn, the planet, is about as well, from a spiritual point of view. Now, to the degree that you didn't understand in the past how to stop protecting your soft spot, how to stop encasing your heart with metal, you're given now the gift of teachings in the form of life and love to give you everything that you now need to move forward and on your way. And these things are what's going to be happening. Well, let's look at them then, shall we? And why don't we do this one first? What a great pen.
painting this is. Gee, this eye, it looks almost as if it's looking into eternity, doesn't it? Do you want to know what eternity really is made of? It's something that we can't get our heads around. But ultimately, it comes down to this, that in the outside world, outside of us, in the external scheme of things, shining moments are as brief as the twinkling of an eye. Yet such twinklings are what eternity is made of. Moments when you, as a human being, say, I love you, I'm proud of you, I forgive you, I'm grateful for you. That's what eternity is made of. Invisible, imperishable, good stuff like that. Words that echo all throughout eternity. Now, the sun is also here as well as what I'm getting here. It is, it's the sun I can see in the second decan of Aries, the 31st of March, April the 9th. A lot of self-confidence with you. Do I need to say that with that sun card sitting there? Now, I don't think you're going to be making any compromises here. Ideas are going to be crystallizing, but we saw that here as well. And this is a confirmation that you are on the right path. It's about expansion. Maybe you might be considering turning a hobby into something of a business. Now, the sun in Aries, well, the sun is also exalted in Aries, and so astrologically, this is great. Now, you probably know that Aries enjoys a challenge. Well, with the sun exalted in Aries, and here for you, your Aries sun now is going to be happiest when your life is moving forward and you are active. I really see here that you're in the process of opening up, really opening up. And this blossoming is the result of, of an inner awakening, I think. Body, mind and spirit are in harmony. And out of this state of integrity, this is going to ensure that you don't permit any lazy compromises. You are going to understand, to feel, and allow your own power free play now. And you won't be giving it over to anybody else in an attitude of subjugation. But do make sure that you stay centered, won't you? Actually reflecting on this point of internal stillness is going to allow you a new sense of self-confidence and allow that to come into being and it guards against an overload of any unnecessary problems. The wisdom within you, as we saw there, this is strong enough to repel any anxieties and doubts which may arise and any brooding mental considerations of your mind, well, they don't stand a chance when you are filled with the life energy and sense of vitality which is bursting out from this red color. So I think you really now have a direction in which to head. And this is actually asking you to understand what your virtues are, and to make the right decisions in your life, to not be held back by fear. This is also about looking inside and outside, I think with integrity, honesty, and no compromises. Actually, this is a, very important for you now is to act from a place of integrity before making decisions. And unless you have clarity of mind and heart, then don't do it because the result will be bad. But if you do, then now is definitely the time to act. So pay attention to your own point and internal stillness. Center yourself and overcome. Are there any reasons now for you to still have any self-doubts? Get rid of them. Do you doubt your integrity and virtue? No. Say this to yourself. I have the power and virtue to reflect 
and know and charge towards success and abundance. And then finally we come to this, I might have to deal with this rather quickly because I'm aware of your time of course. This is the Three of Discs, ah look at the little baby being held there. Well this is good because this is Mars in the second decan of Capricorn, do you know? Mars is going to bring you energy, assertion and a great degree of vitality and Capricorn as you know, like you, is ambitious practical and that makes things tangible. But the good thing is, is that Mars is also exalted in Capricorn. And so the energy of Mars here for you is really, really constructive and good. Rather than what can be with the effect of Mars, something of a bit of a destructive nature. So you'll be getting, maybe you're looking at a new job, you are getting career satisfaction. You're doing a good job. There's continued progression here now, productivity, and some teamwork here as well. Your whole being is needed though. This needs the full engagement of all of your energy. Now, the heavens begin to open and the clouds of uncertainty are blown away. And your unshakable confidence gives you the ability to work through what you have begun and gives you the power to overcome temporary doubts. This is assuring your gradual progress. But fortunately, I do also see reward for your hard work to date. And look, your skill and knowledge is going to push you forward now. Life generally is in balance, so you can reap the rewards of a balanced life. You'll have great ability to stick with things and overcome any obstacles that's necessary to do so. You really can now hoist your sails and let the wind fill them because it's blue sky and great seas ahead. Now, I do think though that there is a situation that needs your readiness to work steadily on it, but engage yourself totally, it's going to be worth it. But ask yourself this, in what areas do you still hold yourself back? In what areas could you be giving more of your energies? Find out and remain aware of what you want to set your full energies towards achieving and say this to yourself. I am now ready to give everything and to receive everything. I am deserving. What a great set of cards and made so much better because of you. Well done you, you did a great job. Uh, what a great reading for you. And I hope you enjoyed it as, as much as I did. I, I thought, and, and these cards are gorgeous I think in um, in a way, but you know, I'm, I'm no artist, but they just appeal to me. Now, unless I see you privately for a clairvoyant reading or for a healing in the meantime, then I'll see you here again this time next month. And until then though, remember one thing, and it is this, that you are a legend. And I look forward to seeing you again next month. And until then, it's bye for now.